Hello everyone and welcome to another really awesome game from round 6 of the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2022. It's Alire Zafiruja versus Fabiano Caruana. Fabi doing well as usual in the Candidates Tournament. Nothing can surprise Fabi. He's, he either wins the Candidates or, you know, he's almost winning the Candidates. And it's uh, Alire who uh, This is his first time in the Candidates. And so far he's uh, played a really, really incredible chess. He only got 4 draws and 1 loss. But uh, in most of the games it really could have um, uh, gone... Uh, <laughs> Either way, uh, and uh, his one loss was the was the Jan Nipomnishi, which is uh, well. Uh, uh, you guys have seen the video, so you know uh, all about what happened there. Uh, but against Fabi, uh, for example, uh, uh, in his game against Hikaru, Alireza started with the D4. In his game against Duda, he started with E4, and now against Fabi, he again switches it up and uh, plays pawn to D4. And now uh, this is uh, this is the position. Uh, you guys said that you wanted uh, some more photos, so here is one photo. Uh, it's uh, from the opening. Basically, the first couple of moves have been played. Uh, again, nothing new, uh, unusual about the photo. The the uh, the playing uh, conditions and the, you know the players are so neat. Everything is so sterile. There, there just uh, isn't so much going on as there was uh, you know uh, back in the day, like a few years ago. Uh, so not all that much to discuss. But uh, as usual, if you guys uh, spot anything out of the ordinary in the photo i am all ears uh, i don't know one thing i can uh, maybe uh, point out is that alireza really looks twice as as, as large as fabi like uh, maybe it's the just the photo of the camera or, or rather the angle of the camera but uh, i don't know th there's something off here it's like he was uh, artificially enlarged maybe in photoshop or something but uh, i don't know just thought that that was funny uh, but yeah, if you guys spot anything else, uh, you know, reading your comments is one of my favorite things to do uh, when it's, uh, you know, regarding uh, the uh, the photos. Uh, so, you know, have at it. Uh, but yeah, getting back to the game. Now, Alireza opens with the D4. We have Knight to F6, C4, and E6. Fabi says, I'm ready for anything. If you want, we, we can go for a nice name. So Indian, we can, uh, you know, I, I've brought uh, everything here for this tournament. But Alireza says, nope, uh, not doing anything crazy. I have to, uh, you know, slow down a little bit let's go for a nice catlin opening and okay pawn to d5 we have bishop to g2 bishop to e7 and knight to f3 we have castles and here uh, there are uh, so many moves that were played it's a very very popular position the the top moves in this position are just castles and queen to c2 and uh, pretty much everyone plays this you know with with a couple of exceptions uh, but the move alireza prepared for fabi has only been played a handful of times and that is queen to d3 now the scary thing and maybe a scary thing for Fabi is that it was played by the legend himself, the uh, the the man you all uh, love love to watch. You know, not just the play, but just you know his presence is so great. Uh, is Boris Gelfand? He is the man behind Queen to D3. He had some very good results with it, uh, and the last time he played it was a couple of months ago in February in the. Uh, in the uh, Czech Republic Extra Liga, he uh, won a very nice game with it, and no doubt uh, Alireza has seen this game. But, but Fabi also, uh, you know, uh, follows what's happening in the chess world. Uh, th there's a chance Fabi saw this as well. So let's see how uh, Fabi deals with it. Uh, usually in structures like these, you you want to play a6, b6, and c5. You know, in no no particular or order. If your opponent isn't threatening anything, so here c5 by Fabi. Uh, we have castles, c captures on d4, knight captures and knight to c6, offering a trade of knights, c captures on d5, knight captures on d4, grabbing that knight, queen captures and knight captures on d5, and here rook to d1. Uh, we have bishop to f6, attacking the queen here, and now uh, what are you going to play here? Uh, well, you have to move the queen, obviously, but where are you going to move the queen? Now, in the game that I've mentioned, uh, Boris Gelfand uh, had this exact same position in February this year, against Lukas uh, Tsiborovsky, uh, and uh, in that game, queen to d3 was played. Uh, Gelfand uh, won a very nice victory, but the actual top recommendation by the engine is a queen to g4. Uh, okay, a queen to c5, queen to d3, a close second, uh, but obviously Alireza prepared for this. So just going um, uh, going with queen to g4, and it's a very odd looking move because you constantly have to worry about this e5 opening up uh, an attack towards uh, your queen. So it's really, really strange. Alireza obviously improved on a Boris Gelfand game, and that uh, thought is scary in itself. I mean, if you know this and you know, okay, Boris Gelfand played this, Alireza just improved on it, that's, uh, you know, 
you, you have to be uh, incredibly uh, brave to, 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 to play against something like this. Uh, but okay, this is Fabi we're talking about. He just continues development. Bishop to d7. Uh, and now knight to d2. We have queen to e7. And now knight to f3. Uh, knight to e4 looks really awesome. But after bishop e5, there just isn't all that much for you to do. If you go back, knight to c3, we can just go back. Bishop to f6. Uh, or even if you play something weird like knight to c5, just offering a knight. This can be played, but it's nothing really. If queen captures, uh, we're going to play bishop captures on d5. Because now if you capture the bishop here, hangs. So it's nothing really. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's fun. So that's why I'm showing it. But knight to f3 was played in the game. Now rook a to c8. And now pawn to e4. Attacking the knight. And now you can't just move the knight. If you just move the knight, e5 wins the game for Ali Reza. That's it. The bishop is trapped. Um, uh, Fabi can resign. So e5 now, grabbing this very important tempo on the queen. Queen to h5 by Ali Reza. And now knight to b4. And what do you play here? Alireza plays bishop to g5. Again, excellent stuff because if Fabi plays something weird, uh, let's say play something like rook to c2 and it's a beautiful move. Who wouldn't put the rook uh, on the second or, you know, on the seventh rank? Uh, it's just uh, it's just like a dream come true. The problem is here, uh, for example, a3, you have to move the knight and then we pick up the, the bishop here. And now the light squares are incredibly weak and uh, black will not be able to defend this. Queen captures on d7. We're going to open up the king side. Captures, captures and now bishop h3 and and that's it. We attack the queen. Once the queen moves, wherever doesn't really matter. Bishop to f5, and there is no defending this position. Uh, rook d8, making some room for the king. But queen h6, we are not allowing this king to escape. Bishop captures on h7 is next, and that's it. Game over. So uh, Fabi has to capture on g5. Uh, so bishop captures on g5. Knight captures. Now Alereza threatens checkmate on h7. And h6, just kicking away the knight. Knight back to f3, and now knight to c6. Fabi could leave the knight here. It seems like a more active square could play something like rook to c5 to defend his e5 pawn this way because Alireza is attacking it. Uh, but he says, nope, that's a weird looking position. Let's go back knight to c6. Uh, and now... How can Alireza continue? Well, there are many moves you can play. You can play a3, you can play b4, you can maybe bring another rook into the game. You could uh, start with knight to h4, try and bring this knight over to f5, and then maybe force black to give up the bishop. Uh, but Alireza says uh, maybe just rook captures on d7, as this is the position that uh, Agad Matar put in the thumbnail of the video. That's what we will play. So rook captures on d7. And it's uh, really an incredible move. It wins the f5 square for the knight, which could be crucial uh, for the for the coming attack uh, but also uh, it's uh, just, uh, you know, hard hard to play this. Uh, you, you have to play this with surgical preci precision with black in order to survive this. Uh, and is Fabi up to it? Let's uh, let's um, uh, find out. So queen captures on d7 and now bishop to h3 first, grabbing hold of this diagonal, attacking the queen and the rook. Uh, and now Fabi says, all right, pawn to f5, which is weird because the bishop can just capture it, uh, but that's just how good Fabi is. And now you have to play bishop captures on f5 and go into this position. For example, bishop captures on f5, attacks the queen and the rook. We're going to move the queen, offer a queen trade. So now you don't have time to grab the rook, or if you trade queens, we capture with this rook. So you're going to have to move the queen. We're going to play rook to d8, and uh, Alireza doesn't win back his exchange, but he will get um, uh, some of the nicer squares here for his knight, and he's going to have constant pressure against uh, the black king so that's the way you want to play it however uh, in the game e captures on f5 was played which seems a little bit better you can always push f6 uh, you know nah, uh, it, it just seems like it allows so much more uh, but Fabi just plays rook c to e8 and now how can Alireza continue this uh, the problem is you don't have something like f6. If you could play f6 uh, and not trade anything, you'd be you'd be fine here. The problem is after queen to f7 offering a queen trade, there is no good way to play this. If you move the queen, then you've just given up this pawn and you don't have the attack. If you trade queens, captures, captures, you can't even mess up black spawn structure as Fabi just captures the knight here. So it's really, really terrible for, uh, for Alireza. So he goes knight to h4. That was the idea. He wants to uh, control these squares here. But now just e4 by Fabi. Uh, we have rook to d1, attacking the queen, bringing the rook into the game, queen to f7, offering a queen trade. And now uh, if Alireza trades, then he doesn't have the attack, he's just down material. Uh, but if he doesn't trade, then Fabi will just grab another pawn. Fabi is not afraid to grab more material, even in um, uh, crazy positions like these. So queen to e2, and uh, just a nice cold-blooded pawn grab, 
queen captures an a2. Now, can Alireza make something of this time that uh, Fabi wasted grabbing this pawn? Uh, well, let's see. Knight to g6. He attacks the rook. Fabi defends it. Rook to f7. And now, uh, knight back to f4. Freeing up uh, this diagonal for the bishop. In, in, so, either knight to f4 or maybe bishop g4 to h5 first and then... Uh, uh still uh, you know deciding whether or not to, to move the knight so maybe this is stronger you know just keeping the uh the knight jump as a as a threat better than executing it right away uh but okay uh knight to f4 we have queen to b3 uh, very important move now preparing e3 and now bishop to g4 alireza wants to get his bishop over to h5 and now fabi has to push e3 that's the only way to stop um Alireza for, from pushing so hard. Now, the problem is if you play uh, bishop to h5, now it doesn't really work. E captures an f2 with check. Now the rook is attacking your queen, so you have to capture uh, like this. And now rook captures an f5 is incredibly strong. That's the problem because now if you play bishop captures here, now just queen captures on d1, nothing is defending the rook, and that's it. You can you can resign this. And if you don't capture the rook, uh, the, then you really don't, don't have a move here. So that's the problem. So instead, we have queen, king to g2. If you try something like b uh, rook to d3 attacking the queen, still just e captures an f2 with check, and uh, you, you have to... Um... Uh, capture with the queen. Queen captures, you're going to move the, the queen, and everything is perfectly fine. Uh, uh, Fabio will have no, no problem playing this game and winning this game. So instead, king to g2, now the pawn cannot capture as the rook would hang with check, uh, but now we just play rook to d8. Fabio now offers a rook trade, we have rook captures, knight captures, and now f captures on e3. Alireza grabs that pawn. Uh, the only problem is the position is completely winning for Fabio, but only if you play the absolute precise idea so feel free to pause the video and win the game for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing that the king and the queen are occupying the same second rank. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to c7. Now, rook to c2 is a terrible threat uh, for white to face, and there is no good way to face it. Uh, Alireza has to move the king. King to h3 was played. Now comes knight to f7, preparing knight to g5 check, which will force the king further back, uh, further up the board. So bishop to f3, giving the king the g5. For square as well but now rook c2 attacking the queen queen d1 now uh, luckily the bishop is defending the queen otherwise we would just play rook captures on h2 and pick up the white queen so that's uh, very important but now knight g5 with check king to g4 and it seems like alireza is safe here and there is uh, nothing fabi can do but uh, fabi plays the simplest idea that uh, leaves uh, alireza basically without a move uh, and that is knight captures on f3 and now uh, what do you play? If if you play queen captures, just rook captures on h2, and what are you what what are you doing with this position here? White has uh, uh, white has no future here. Uh, or if you play uh, what Alireza played, queen to d8 with check, king to h7, and king captures on f3. It's a little bit better, but not enough to stop Fabi. Just queen captures on b2. And again, how are you playing this? Uh, you can't give a check. If your queen was on e8, for example, then queen g6 would allow you at least a perpetual. So this is what Alireza has to try now. Queen to e8, but now just queen back to f6, not allowing this perpetual. We have e4, uh, uh, trying to push uh, some pawns as this is a pass pawn, but now just rook captures on h2. Fabi shows just how hopeless Alireza's position is. There really is no move you can play here. So queen to d7. Here we have queen to c3 with check and with this move both players have played 40 moves so the time control has been reached and uh, none of the players have to worry about time anymore uh, but time is the least of Alireza's uh, concerns so here queen g4 queen to d2 offering a queen trade and of course queen to a4 Alireza declines this but now pawn to h5 with check and uh, now there really isn't all that much you can do here uh, or rather even h5 wasn't even played uh, apologies for that uh, Alirez just played queen to a4 and resigned in this position because he realized that h5 is coming and that there is no stopping that so after playing queen to a4 it was in this position on move 42 that Alireza Firuja resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here so here uh, of course uh, after h5 uh, you resign uh, because whatever you play gets you checkmated if king to g 
uh, we just play queen d8 to check. Your only move is f6 and queen captures and f6 will be checkmate. If you go down the board, that's not much better. Just queen to f2 is checkmate. And of course, if you capture the pawn with the knight, which is the only other uh, way to play, queen to e2 check. Now we nicely connect with the knight on h5 and that's it. King f4, queen captures or rook captures on h5, uh, leaving white without any counterplay. Uh, of course, black is up a whole rook. Uh, this is unplayable. So tough break for Alireza who loses his second game uh, in the in the FIDE candidates tournament now he's the, um, he has four draws and two losses uh, both of the losses against the, the leaders of the candidates uh, to Fabiano Corona and Gianni Pomnici and it just shows you that uh, uh, how, how strong of a player Fabi is even with this incredibly rare move that Alireza pre prepared this queen to d3 idea that was uh, well uh, dare I say it honed to perfection by none other than Boris Gelfand uh, it was still not enough to take down Fabi even with this incredible rook capture and these seven uh, which uh, really uh, allowed Alireza to, to, to go for the attack to grab some critical light squares here around the black king uh, Fabi played it to perfection and uh, well it, it just wasn't possible to, to force anything here uh, so yeah uh, that's uh, the game hope you guys enjoyed it tough break for Alireza but we are still in the first ha half of the candidates tournament you know if he gets a few wins um, uh, in the next few games uh, you know he, he he's definitely back back in the race but that's uh, easier said than done we'll, we'll see how it goes uh so yeah once again hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank uh, i would like to wish a very happy birthday to anwar the 95 percent american flag numa and i would like to thank uh, kaushik varanasi max Begin, johan uh, bridger and the voice of reason consulting llc for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of the candidates uh, until it finishes so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day